Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Well, it's been several weeks since the Pennsylvania budget has passed with an array of programs. We've heard from a lot of the supporters of the budget. We're going to hear now from one of its chief critics, and then a health care update following these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. Well, now the, air, the dust has settled on the big budget debate of 2007, 16 or 17 days after the deadline. The Pennsylvania legislature sent a budget and an array of other program expansions to the governor who has signed them. Now let's sort of drop back and take a look at, at some of the critics, at least one of the uh, critics of uh, some of the legislation that was passed. Joining me, as sometimes is the case, is Representative Mike Terzai, he represents a district in Allegheny County, and he's the House Republican Policy Chairman. Welcome, Representative. Hey, Terry, thanks for having me. Well, it's great always to great. To it's always great to have you on the program. You know, uh, uh, for our viewers who, you know, regular viewers, we've had a number of people from the administration on over the past six months. The governor was on, uh, you know, touting his budget. We wanted to give, you know, the critics an opportunity to come on and talk about things that they didn't like in the budget and. And you're the, you're the designated critic. <laughs> now there were there were seventy some in the house that didn't vote for the budget. Was it what, six, it's sixty some? I'm sorry, sixty. Yeah. Give me the number. Uh, I think 60, it was sixty three. Sixty three, but only two over in the Senate. That's if, right for, for the big budget. That's right. All right, well, let's talk about some of that. Let, let's go to the size of the budget. There was a big argument over how big this budget really is. Five point. We've heard five point three, five point one, three point nine. <laughs> but the point is, this does increased spending by over a billion dollars yep. from last year's budget. Talk a little bit about the spending part of it that I know you, you, you've expressed some concerns about. Terry, this budget is um, $1.4 billion more in spending over last year. You know, the, people can play with other numbers, but the fact of the matter is, is we are increasing spending by $1.4 billion. And, and it is a 5.3% increase. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, people can play games, and they are games. There's two games that, that uh, if, if, if you ever hear people who are in favor of this huge increase in spending who want to try to shift, shift the right. game in words, what they do is, is they do two gimmicks. They shift certain items that used to be on budget, you know, with the net operating budget, and then put them into other funds to pick up the tab. But it's still mm -hmm. an increase in spending. Mm -hmm. And the other thing they do is, is whatever last year's budget number was, and it was $26.1 last year, there's always some supplemental spending, right. and they try to ignore like that 200 million wasn't there. So you're including you the supplemental to get to the uh, the 5.3 because 5.3 percent. You go budget to budget. Yeah. That, that that's just being truthful to okay, the Okay, within the 5.3 billion or percentage increase, 1.4 billion, there there are critics of certain at programmatic aspects. Now you're the policy chair of the Republican Party. Just go through some of what you think was the excessive spending in the budget. Well. Let me, and I will hit some specifics. Okay. Welfare is by far the, the, the greatest expenditure. Um, again, no, no, education is going to surpass it. Last two years, welfare has been the most, uh, lo the largest spending item that we put money into. Education with the uh, pre K programs right. now, um, and the, and, and, and what they've also done is they've done bump ups and sent more money that is all going, all primarily going to Philadelphia. I, okay. mean, I mean, that's just the truth. Um, it's not going to growing school districts like like mine or other suburban school districts across the state. Um, but but the real thing is, this spending has increased now over five years by some thirty percent. Right. In in Rich's years, over eight years, it was twenty two percent. In K or twenty one percent, Casey, it was twenty two percent over eight years. Right. Thornburg, fourteen percent over eight years. We're only through five years, and it's over 30% right. in, under Governor Rendell. And not only that, not only is Governor Rendell spending today's taxpayers' dollars, he has borrowed so much money, he's spending tomorrow's taxpayers' That's dollars. That's all the various bond issues that have been floated for the various programs That's you're right. talking about. That's right. So you, you've got, on the one hand, I love spending Governor Rendell, voracious appetite spender mm -hmm. Governor Rendell, spend, spend, spend up, up here. Um, another 5.3%, $1.4 billion increase in spending here. 
and he wants to borrow another two billion dollars over here to add on top of the three billion dollars he's already borrowed mm -hmm. and that doesn't even take what, into account this turnpike boot and dog well, well we'll talk about that in the next segment i want to talk about that but what about the critics who say well yeah but there's no tax hike uh... in this particular budget i mean even some republicans were going out and saying we stopped the seven quote infamous taxes yeah. their words infamous taxes that were in Governor Rendell's original proposal for a variety of these programs. I mean, that I mean that, that's do. great. But when you have a $700 million surplus, right. a $700 million surplus, it could be higher than that, but it, it, it at least admitted $700 million surplus. What jurisdiction in the country increases taxes with a $700 million surplus? That's ridiculous. All right, we're chatting with Representative Michael Terzai. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. I want to get into this business of the turnpike. It's really a fascinating uh, uh, a situation and talk to him about what he thinks about the expansion of the turnpike uh, 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 over uh, onto Route 80 and some other uh, venues. We'll get back. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society, doctors and patients, preserve the relationship. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, we're talking with Representative Mike Terzai from Allegheny County. He's a House Republican Policy Chairman. We're getting some of the criticisms and the uh, concerns expressed in the passage of the Governor, Governor Rendell. I'll call it Governor Rendell's budget, and I think you would agree it's mostly what Governor Rendell wanted. At least he got a big chunk of what he wanted. Oh, I, I would we, say, yeah, no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, some of your Republican <laughs> colleagues might not agree about how much he got, but... Yeah. but but let, let her, you, you want to make this been point. Go ahead. Tax cuts. Go I, ahead. I mean, that, make your point about the tax cuts. Literally, with the $700 million surplus, here you have Governor Rendell, who increased our personal income tax uh, early in his administration from 2.8% to 3.07%. For goodness sakes, we should have returned some of that surplus to the hardworking people who earn the money, like my dad. Uh, he's passed away. But, you know, guys like my dad, every dollar in his pocket meant he helped his family out more. Mm -hmm. And we should have been returning that money back to the taxpayers, rolled part of that personal income, to, uh, income tax back, and, and given some of that surplus back to those people. But, but this state, like any dollar that this governor can get his hands on, he'll take. And, uh, you know, welfare, they have Jack Wagner, Auditor General's, investigating them for LIHEAP fraud, you know, the low-income housing heating uh, program. Uh, they've got real problems with their foster care programs. The federal government's auditing them. We saw it in Welfare to Work, r real questions about fraud, and yet they increased their budget mm -hmm. um, significantly. And then in education, they created another whole entitlement program with this pre-K. Look, I talk to people in public schools all the time. They don't want it. They, they want to do what job they do right now on K through 12 well. Yeah, your well. point is to put the money into basic education. Yeah, put it into basic education. Yeah. All right, let's turn. I want to turn to this, <coughs> the, the big, uh, a huge topic. I mean, and, and I, I think it's just sort of, do, there are two issues that sort of dominated the debate towards the end of the budget discussion. One was a smoking ban. And I, we're not going to get into that because okay. I think that's a fascinating topic. It, it has it so is, many ramifications. <laughs> and a lot of good people on both sides of that issue. I think you would agree there. Yes, no doubt and about it. And then the, the, uh, the, how we're going to deal with this backlog of problems with mass transit and roads and bridges. I don't think anybody disagrees that we have a serious deficiency in bridge and road maintenance. Uh, Independent Commission says we needed $1.7 billion throw mass transit in there. We need a dedicated source of funding. For, do you agree with that, first of all? Well, I, I, I think the first issue is, is on mass transit. They needed to downside. I, I can only speak to what's out in Pittsburgh because that's what I know. But there have <clears throat> for years been routes where people aren't riding the buses. Um, in, in addition, um, with respect to the Port Authority, they had middle management and upper management collecting pensions at the same time they were collecting their salary. Mm -hmm. And then you've got bus drivers that were double dipping on the overtime in half for years, just like the city fire department out there. And the, the fact of the matter is, is they just wanted to throw good, 
good money. So your that. point here is, and, the, and there's been criticisms of the efficiencies in in SEPTA. That's the equivalent for yeah, Philadelphia, yeah, Philadelphia, southeastern so Pennsylvania. Was your point authority. that before this decision was made to give to toll Route 80 and and to increase the fees on the turnpike? By 20, the, the current turnpike, 25% in 2009. That's the two yeah. ways they're going to come up with a billion dollars down the road, not right. this year, but next year and for at least, what, eight or nine more years. Yeah, that's right. All right. Is your concern that there should have been reform of these mass transits before this money was done or that you don't think the money was necessary at all for, for the mass transit? I'm not convinced the money was necessary at all, first of all, um, because they never were forced to implement reforms. And there's no reforms tied to this money. And the next thing that I think is crazy about this transportation bill is they're going to borrow up to 13 billion, folks, billion dollars, 13 billion dollars. And they're turning that money over to the Turnpike Commission, for goodness sakes, the most antiquated, other than the LCB, the Liquor Control Board, which needs to go. Right. They are going to turn over 13 billion dollars to the most antiquated patronage laden entity in the state of Pennsylvania. And they're going to say, have at it. And, and they're going to take, they're essentially going to take over the transportation system in this state. All right, we're talking with Representative Terzai, obviously a critic of uh, much of what happened in the recent budget debate in Harrisburg. We'll be back after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. We're Representative Mike uh, Terzai, who's the House Republican Policy Chairman. Uh, Representative, let me go to one other uh, point about this. Uh, there can be no doubt, however, that we've got this huge percentage of roads and bridges that are in a state of disrepair. And the search or the need for funding for those still remains, given your concerns about the transit operations, what would you have suggested or what would you have supported in terms of funding? Or don't you think that amount of money was actually necessary or would you fund it out of the general fund? We're talking now about the, the need, the millions of dollars that would have been necessary, billions, some say, over the next couple of years to deal with the roads and, bri and bridge issue. Well, I think if you, if you segregated the roads and bridges, I think people would have talked about um, particular fee increases. People would have done that. There's no doubt about it. But there was no way that they were going to send a boondoggle of $13 billion, which is nothing more really than an invitation for, I, I think, a, a cesspool, really. Right. I'm convinced of it. And uh, as I said, even even uh, people who talked about, quote, unquote, the SEPTA problem, mm -hmm. you know, the southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, they would talk about it. They needed a eighty million. That right. you know, that's what they were saying. Eighty million. Right. Well, they're getting thirteen billion dollars because we have a SEPTA problem. But it did look like in, in the debate that went on that that Republicans in general were did want some reforms, which you didn't get. No, there weren't any. And even in the Senate, where your party has a majority, to use an expression, you caved in, or they seem to have caved in, without putting these. Uh, conditions on SEPTA and the other yeah, it, it, th those were yeah they're not in place yeah, they're not there they're not um, and and I wish they were all right, uh, all right. And, and and even like the funniest thing I saw is is that you know there's some code of conduct now put in with the uh, respect to the Turnpike Commission uh, members and and their executive level staff that says um, I, it was really interesting. Um, they have to have a fiduciary relationship to the Commonwealth, and I was going around and my colleagues, and we were saying, "You mean they don't do that now? Yeah. You know, I mean that's not there now." Yeah. Uh, it, it, you mean a, that they're so independent that yeah, yeah. there is a potential for conflict of interest? Oh, that's without a doubt, that's the okay. point. I want to um, before we end the program, I want to give you a chance. You you you've been working on reducing the personal income tax. Uh, it's 3.07 now. You want to drop it back to 2.99. 
Is this a way, your way of curbing what you would say is the voracious appetite for state spending? No, wait, Terry, you're right on point. My, my colleague and I, Tom Quigley, Tom's from Montgomery right. County, I'm from out west. Uh, our whole point is, is get it out of the hands of the politicians. Um, you know, the less money in the hands of the politicians mm -hmm. and that you send back to taxpayers, the safer everybody is in the Commonwealth mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. it, it, look, $700 million surplus. They're, they're spending every cent of it and more. And, you know, we've held off the borrowing right now. We've, we've done a good job about holding off the borrowing. The governor wanted to borrow $850 million for an energy fund so that right. he could pass out checks now. You know what that would cost taxpayers? Something like one, almost $1.5 billion dollars that your kids and grandkids would be paying back until the year of 2027 so he can pass out checks today? All right, back in a moment. We'll see you in a few seconds when we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association, building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Let me say first of all thanks to Representative Terzai for uh, you know getting uh, his point of view uh, across. As I indicated earlier, we had lots of folks on throughout the course of the spring from the administration, and Governor Rendell was on trying to provide some balance. Jo joining me now for our one of our uh, health care updates is John Shervinsky, who's the executive director of the Pennsylvania Association of Medical Suppliers. A little different angle on something. We try to on this program bring you all sorts of <laughs> different uh, positions and issues relating to health care, one of the most important topics uh, we deal with on Pennsylvania Newsmakers. John, welcome to the program. Thanks, Terry. Nice to be here. Well, let me. this is an interesting subject. You're uh, the executive director of an organization, the Pennsylvania Association of Medical Suppliers. I'm not sure a lot of our viewers know what that means. Why don't you tell us what, tell me what that means? Well, our, our companies are in the business of helping people with, with serious long-term health problems live comfortably in their own homes. And we save the system, we save the healthcare system big dollars uh, in the process. For example, uh, if someone in Pennsylvania under medical assistance goes into a nursing home, that's going to cost the state about $56,000 a year. If that same person stays in their own home, even with intensive care, it's only going to run about $23,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's big savings to the system, and, uh, and we provide whatever is needed, from mobility devices to oxygen to... Uh, so in other, in other words, what, what the companies do is they'll come to your home if you're dealing with home-based care and bring the medical equipment, which is often important for their survival, exactly. uh, their health care needs, uh, to their home. Uh, and so give, give, give me an example of what of some types of the equipment would be well, wheelchairs. The, the uh, wheelchairs. If I take oxygen, for example. We can provide someone with the COPD. We can provide oxygen for about $7.65 a day. If that person loses their oxygen for a day, mm -hmm. in all likelihood they're going to have to be hospitalized right. at a cost of about $4,000 a day. Okay. So we can provide oxygen uh, to someone in that situation for an entire year for less the, than the cost of a single day in the hospital. All right, now let's talk about some other, I mean, <clears throat> one of the issues that you have had some concern with is something that I, I didn't know anything about until uh, a couple of days ago, and that's something called selective contracting. And that's a policy, perhaps that's the best way to put it, that the Rendell administration through the Department of Public Welfare is doing or would like to do that your organization opposes. So let me get it straight. They're doing it or they would like to do it? They would like to do it. Okay. They had, they had intended to do it this spring. It is on hold for right now, uh, but it is still very much alive. All right. What is selective contracting? In the simplest terms, selective contracting is competitive bidding uh, for, for the services that we mm -hmm. provide. 
and uh, there are in, in total about 1,400 different items that medical assistants will reimburse uh, our companies for providing. Problem is that, that no single company uh, provides all 1,400 mm -hmm. items. Uh, so by requiring that people bid on all 1,400 items, you're, you're, you're putting uh, you know, the companies in a very difficult position to start with because right. nobody can provide that, all of those services. So would, would your argument be that that policy, if implemented, and I notice you've gotten some legislative support, Senator Mello from Lackawanna County, who's the Democratic leader in the Senate, has written a letter to the Department of Public Welfare raising some questions about the policy. Do I got that Th right? That's, that's right. In, in fact, the, the entire northeastern Pennsylvania delegation is, is pretty much up in arms about this because uh, uh, the Rendell administration had proposed a pilot project right. for northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, and they have, you know, they have some unique health care problems, right. and this would just create one more. Yeah. Let's talk about the actual the dynamic of this now. So you've got how many companies? Fourteen? How many did you say? Uh, there's, there's, uh, there are over a thousand. Okay, let's just DMA say you've got a thousand. They're all scattered through the state. If someone would need uh, whatever medical device it might be under the Rendell proposal, the Rendell administration's proposal, your argument would be that, A, they might have to go out of their area to get what they need and that that conceivably could increase the cost. B, the availability of it when they need it would be in question. Uh, so despite the fact that their argument would be it would lower the cost, your argument would be what on well, those issues? Well, their argument, their, their argument uh, on, on lowering the cost is that it's going to lower the cost a little bit. Yeah. It's going to lower the cost by about uh, three hundredths of one percent. Uh, you know, five million dollars out of a fourteen billion dollar budget. Mm -hmm. it, it is literally the flea on the elephant's back. Right. Uh, if you look at the if you look at the big picture, uh, at best, uh, this is going to re re result in some very small short term savings. Mm -hmm. At worst, it's going to it's going to guarantee higher prices down the road. And here's why: you know, right now, you have a thou over a thousand companies uh, competing providing local services. Under this plan, that would be reduced to a maximum of 15 companies statewide mm -hmm. providing medical assistance services. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to guarantee, you, 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 take, you take a program like this where you have uh, the, the population getting older uh, right. with each passing year, living longer with each passing year. Okay. Uh, this is, this is a, a primary market for, right. for, this, for these products. You are eliminating competition guaranteeing higher prices. All right, thanks for coming in uh, and presenting your point of view and thank you for watching as always and we'll see you next week for another edition and stay well.